welcome. And thank you for taking some time today to focus in on the things of God. Today we're going to look at a passage in 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, and we're going to read the first 19 verses. What we're going to think about today is how we use prayer to handle the things we go through in this life. And we're going to look at an example of a king named Jehoshaphat. I remember as a kid, that used to be one of the funniest names to me, but it was one of the most memorable names too. But in 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, Starting in verse 1, the Bible says, After this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Meunites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hezanan tomorrow, that is, in Gedi. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah in Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in front of the new courtyard and said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand. No one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. But now, here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. And see how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you, all the men of Judah, with their wives and children and little ones, stood there before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Matina, a Levite, and descendant of Asaph, as he stood in the assembly. He said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. I guess if you learn anything about Christianity right away after you become a Christian, is that becoming a Christian doesn't mean that all your problems are going to go away. But the difference is, after you've become a Christian, when those problems come up, you realize that you're not facing them on your own. You don't have to deal with the things of life according to your own wisdom or your own strength. And that's exactly what Jehoshaphat did when he learned that there were three armies about to attack Judah. He immediately turned to God and he called the people to fast and pray. And there are some things that we can learn from his example that show us some key principles about solving our problems through prayer. And I think one of the first things we see right away is that God is interested in your problem. In verse 3 that we read, Jehoshaphat immediately turned to prayer when he learned about the attack that was coming. He knew that God cared about him and that God was concerned about the things he was going through. If you're a believer, you can know that God's interested in helping you 
overcome anything that's discouraging you or defeating you. In Psalm 62 and verse 8, the Bible says, Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. But we also learn here that God is greater than our problems. This king knew the danger his nation was facing. But he also knew that God had the power to overcome anything. So in verse 6 that we read, he said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand. No one can withstand you. God is perfectly capable of leading us to victory. It doesn't matter what the situation is. In Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 27, God said, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Of course, the answer there is no. Most things are too tough for us to handle, but through God, all things are possible. But in Jehoshaphat's response, we also see that our first response should be to turn to the Lord. You know, one of the phrases that kind of grates me a little bit is when people say, all we can do now is pray. Well, the king's immediate response was to start praying. He didn't go to his generals first to find out his strategy. He went straight to the Lord. And it would have made sense for this king who knew that the enemy was coming to start trying to figure out some sort of counter strategy. But in verse 3, it says that he resolved to inquire of the Lord and he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. His example makes us look at our own lives and ask ourselves if we're as quick to go to God when the, the tough things of life start to come up. Let God put your problems in perspective. And then you'll find out that you have friends around you that you can go to for prayer and godly advice. But first, go to God in prayer. But we do know that God might want to involve other people in praying for your situation. Sometimes the things that worry us affect other people around us, like our families, our churches, our communities. Jehoshaphat involved the, the whole nation in praying to the Lord to deliver them from those armies. One of the greatest blessings, I think, in life is having godly people who know how to intercede on your behalf. But while you're praying, understand that God will provide a solution to your problem. While the people of Judah were praying, the Lord let the king know that he would fight that battle on the king's behalf. In verse 15, God said, Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, because the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. In Romans chapter 8 and verses 31 and 32, the Bible says, If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? The understanding that God wasn't willing to spare Jesus on the cross shows us that we can trust God for the daily needs that we have. When it feels as if God's taking his time to answer a prayer, we can use that time to develop our spiritual maturity because God's more interested in our character than he is in our comfort. But another lesson I think we learned from this passage is that our prayers should be God-centered and not problem-centered. And that's something that we all need to work on. We pray looking at the problem rather than looking at God. In verses 6 through 12, we read Jehoshaphat's prayer, and it focused almost exclusively on God's power and promises to deliver his people. In verses 5 and 6, he said again, Are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand. No one can withstand you. Too often when we pray, we're more focused on our problems than we are on the power of God. And you know, if we're honest, we'll admit it's a choice we make to pray that way. Because we have a decision. We can focus on the problem, or we can focus on the power of God. A lot of times we put our focus on the wrong place because we know that God's solution is usually going to require faith on our part. 
important decisions typically challenge our confidence to some degree. In verse 17 that we read, God told them that he didn't want Judah to fight at all. In fact, all they were going to have to do was stand there and watch God work. And then on down the passage in verses 21 through 25, the confusion of the enemy turned them on it themselves. They ended up killing each other. What God does might not always make sense from a human point of view. But if the answer is really from God, he'll provide the faith we need to follow those commands. But there is one final thing I think we need to remember. God's solution is always the best solution. God knows every intimate detail in any situation, including the personalities and the pasts of every person involved in the situation. If we're willing to trust God, we'll be able to discover the best solution possible. So it doesn't matter what we're going through. We can know without any question that God's interested in our trials. And we can also know that God is able to help us overcome any of the problems that we're having. We need to focus on God's power and faithfulness to provide his timing. Because in God's hands, our problems aren't roadblocks. They're opportunities that we can use to develop a more intimate and dynamic relationship with him. But that relationship begins with our relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And if you're watching this and you've never received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life, I want to invite you to do that right now. We're going to have a prayer together. And as we're praying, please let the Lord speak to your heart and lead you to that point of decision. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you again for the blessing of another day. Thank you, Lord, for working in our lives, for giving us the answers we need when we need them. We may not always see them long before we need them, but when we need the things that we need, we know that you have provided those needs for us. And so, Lord, I'm thankful today that you're working in our lives and in our hearts. And I pray for everyone watching this, and especially those who've never received you as Lord and Savior, that you would draw them into your saving knowledge, Lord, and that you would lead them to salvation. And I pray in all things your will be done, ultimately to your honor and glory. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.